to move at all, let alone reach breakneck speeds, the bullet train needs power. And it gets all the power it needs in the form of electricity from overhead lines. The connection between the wire and the train is this device along here, the pantograph. So electricity flows in through those few square centimetres where it touches the wire, and from there, down into the train. To feed enough power, engineers faced a choice between a faster or a bigger electrical flow, stepping up the voltage or boosting the current. In a lab that looks more like the set of a sci-fi movie, Manchester University professor Ian Cotton shows the demands big currents make. So, Ian, talk me through this. I'm guessing current is going to go around there somewhere. Yes, yeah, so we have a transformer from the mains, and in this loop we get a high current. All right. Well, fire it up, then. Is it working now? It will do. You'll see the numbers on the ammeter go up, so that means we're getting more current flowing through the loop. So this is the quantity of amps flying through here. Oh, oh hang on, look already. This wire is getting hot. What's happening? High amps, a big current, overload the thin wire. It heats it up to the point of complete failure. So if you have very, very high currents, you need to use a very big piece of metal to let the current flow. So for our train, we'd need much bigger than this? Absolutely. It would be very, very big and very, very heavy. To carry enough current for the bullet train, the overhead wires would have to be huge, thicker than a man's arm, and enormously expensive. Totally impractical for train lines that run for hundreds of miles. The only other way to give the train the juice it needs was to up the flow the voltage. Train lines usually carry 1,500 or 3,000 volts, nowhere near enough for a bullet train, so the engineers increased it to 25,000 volts. But with such a gigantic voltage, any break in the circuit between the wire and pantograph can be catastrophic. The pantograph has not just one job, really, to maintain that contact with the wire overhead, but it is quite an important job because lose that contact and you lose power, which would be inconvenient. Worse, you might damage the train. If the pantograph loses contact, it causes an arc. In the safety of a high-voltage lab, an arc looks very pretty. Whoa! So what are we seeing here? So this is something called a Jacob's Ladder, and we're making a high-voltage arc which is travelling up Arcing happens when there's a break in a high-voltage circuit. In the Jacob's Ladder, there's a gap in the circuit between the two poles. The voltage is so high that it turns the gap into plasma, superheated air. And plasma is very hot, close to 10,000 degrees C, making arcs very dangerous indeed. That's arcing that we're looking at. Exactly. So that's what would happen if the pantograph moved away from the actual wire. Arcing does happen on normal trains. Here, icy overhead wires are breaking the circuit. But the higher the voltage, the more arcing is a problem. In this demonstration, I'm going to play the pantograph to see what happens to my paper train when the connection is broken. So this is a demonstration of the potential bad side of high voltage. Yeah, so the copper bar is at high voltage, and if yeah. you touch that pole to it and move it away, you'll make a high voltage arc. OK. There we go. But when it gets near to things... Aha! Yeah, straight away, that's... Do you know, I can see the downside there. What's happened is it set fire to my train quite badly. OK, so it's no surprise that the plasma arc ignites a paper train but it can also damage a real train and its overhead wires. To prevent damage that could take whole lines out of action, the engineers needed a pantograph that would not lose contact with the overhead wire. And the key to their solution lies in this. It's just a crowbar. Well, a lever. And used in the right way, it can keep the pantograph pressing against the wire no matter what. 
which is a good thing, because you really don't want to mess about with dodgy connections and massively powerful electrical supplies. Levers are essentially pretty simple devices. There's something long, like this, that pivots around a fulcrum, like that. The longer the lever, the more it can lift. So, to move something heavy, like this anvil, I'm gonna need a longer lever. Yeah, that, that should do the job in place, and, well, that's, that's easy. It was the Greek scientist Archimedes who first worked out the significance of the distance between fulcrum and where the force acts on a lever. He reckoned, rather famously, that with a long enough lever, he could move the Earth. They would, of course, have needed somewhere to stand to do it. The bullet train's unique pantograph acts like a lever, too. A spring pulls the pantograph up. If the spring contracts, it pulls with less force. To compensate, a cunning mechanism automatically lengthens a lever, increasing the force. The whole thing is a compensatory mechanism, and the result is a constant pressure against that wire. And so far, they've been able to keep the train supplied with high-voltage power without frying the pantographs.